April 20. David anointed king of Judah. After this, David asked the Lord, Should I move back to one of the towns of Judah? Yes, the Lord replied. Then David asked, Which town should I go to? To Hebron, the Lord answered. David's two wives were Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel. So David and his wives and his men and their families all moved to Judah, and they settled in the villages near Hebron. Then the men of Judah came to David and crowned him king over the people of Judah. When David heard that the men of Jabesh-Gilead had buried Saul, he sent them this message. May the Lord bless you for being so loyal to your master Saul and giving him a decent burial. May the Lord be loyal to you in return and reward you with his unfailing love. And I, too, will reward you for what you have done. Now that Saul is dead, I ask you to be my strong and loyal subjects like the people of Judah, who have anointed me as their new king. Ishbosheth crowned king of Israel. But Abner, son of Ner, the commander of Saul's army, had already gone to Maenaim with Saul's son Ishbosheth. There he proclaimed Ishbosheth king over Gilead, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, the land of the Asherites, and all the rest of Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he became king, and he ruled from Maenaim for two years. Meanwhile, the people of Judah remained loyal to David. David made Hebron his capital, and he ruled as king of Judah for seven and a half years. War between Israel and Judah. One day Abner led Ishbosheth's troops from Maenaim to Gibeon. About the same time, Joab, son of Zeruiah, led David's troops out and met them at the pool of Gibeon. The two groups sat down there, facing each other from opposite sides of the pool. Then Abner suggested to Joab, Let's have a few of our warriors fight hand to hand here in front of us. All right, Joab agreed. So twelve men were chosen to fight from each side twelve men of Benjamin, representing Ishbosheth, son of Saul, and twelve representing David. Each one grabbed his opponent by the hair and thrust his sword into the other's side so that all of them died. So this place at Gibeon has been known ever since as the Field of Swords. A fierce battle followed that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were defeated by the forces of David. The Death of Asahel Joab, Abishai, and Asahel, the three sons of Zeruiah, were among David's forces that day. Asahel could run like a gazelle, and he began chasing Abner. He pursued him relentlessly, not stopping for anything. When Abner looked back and saw him coming, he called out, Is that you, Asahel? Yes, it is, he replied. Go fight someone else, Abner warned. Take on one of the younger men and strip him of his weapons. But Asahel kept right on chasing Abner. Again, Abner shouted to him, Get away from here. I don't want to kill you. How could I ever face your brother Joab again? But Asahel refused to turn back. So Abner thrust the butt end of his spear through Asahel's stomach, and the spear came out through his back. He stumbled to the ground and died there. And everyone who came by that spot stopped and stood still when they saw Asahel lying there. When Joab and Abishai found out what had happened, they set out after Abner. The sun was just going down as they arrived at the hill of Ama near Gia, along the road to the wilderness of Gibeon. Abner's troops from the tribe of Benjamin regrouped there at the top of the hill to take a stand. Abner shouted down to Joab, "'Must we always be killing each other?' Don't you realize that bitterness is the only result? When will you call off your men from chasing their Israelite brothers? Then Joab said, God only knows what would have happened if you hadn't spoken, for we would have chased you all night if necessary. So Joab blew the ram's horn, and his men stopped chasing the troops of Israel. All that night, Abner and his men retreated through the Jordan Valley. They crossed the Jordan River, traveling all through the morning and didn't stop until they arrived at Maenaim. Meanwhile, Joab and his men also returned home. When Joab counted his casualties, he discovered that only 19 men were missing, in addition to Asahel. But 360 of Abner's men had been killed, all from the tribe of Benjamin. Joab and his men took Asahel's body to Bethlehem and buried him there in his father's tomb. Then they traveled all night and reached Hebron at daybreak. That was the beginning of a long war between those who were loyal to Saul and those loyal to David. As time passed, David became stronger and stronger, while Saul's dynasty became weaker and weaker. 
David's sons born in Hebron. These are the sons who were born to David in Hebron. The oldest was Amnon, whose mother was Ahinoam from Jezreel. The second was Daniel, whose mother was Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gesher. The fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, whose mother was Abital. The sixth was Ithream, whose mother was Egla, David's wife. These sons were all born to David in Hebron. From First Chronicles These are the sons of David who were born in Hebron. The oldest was Amnon, whose mother was Ahinoam from Jezreel. The second was Daniel, whose mother was Abigail from Carmel. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gesher. The fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, whose mother was Abital. The sixth was Ithream, whose mother was Eglah, David's wife. These six sons were born to David in Hebron, where he reigned seven and a half years. From Second Samuel, David's Mightiest Men These are the names of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashobim the Hakmonite, who was the leader of the three, the three mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar son of Dodai, a descendant of Ahoah. Once Eleazar and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israelite army had fled. He killed Philistines until his hand was too tired to lift his sword, and the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. Next in rank was Shammah son of Agi from Harar. One time the Philistines gathered at Lehi and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. The Israelite army fled, but Shammah held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Once during the harvest, when David was at the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. The Lord forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. From First Chronicles These are the leaders of David's mighty warriors. Together with all Israel, they decided to make David their king, just as the Lord had promised concerning Israel. Here is the record of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashabim the Hakmonite, who was leader of the three, the mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 300 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar son of Dodai, a descendant of Ahoah. He was with David in the battle against the Philistines at Pass Damon. The battle took place in a field full of barley, and the Israelite army fled. But Eleazar and David held their ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord saved them by giving them a great victory. Once when David was at the rock near the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. God forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risk their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. From Second Samuel David's Thirty Mighty Men 
Abishai, son of Zeruiah, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed a great Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. Other members of the thirty included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shammah from Herod, Elika from Herod, Helaz from Pelon, Ira, son of Ikesh from Tekoa, Ebi-ezer from Anathoth, Sibachai from Husha, Zalman from Ahoa, Maharai from Netopha, Helid son of Baena from Netopha, Ithiai son of Ribai from Gibeah in the land of Benjamin, Benaiah from Pirathon, Hurai from Nael Geash, Abi Alban from Araba, Asmaveth from Bahurim, Eliaba from Shealban, the sons of Jashin, Jonathan son of Shagi from Herar, Ahiam son of Shear from Hear, Eliphalet son of Ahazbi from Maeka, Eliam son of Ahithophel from Gilo, Hezro from Carmel, Pearai from Arba, Igal son of Nathan from Zoba, Bani from Gad, Zelik from Ammon, Neharai from Beeroth, Joab's armor bearer, Ira from Jater, Gerub from Jater, Uriah the Hittite. There were thirty seven in all. From First Chronicles, Abishai, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed an Egyptian warrior who was seven and a half feet tall and whose spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. David's mighty warriors also included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shammah from Herod, Heliz from Pelan, Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sibachai from Husha, Zalman from Ahoa, Maharai from Netopha, Helid son of Meena from Netopha, Ithai son of Ribai from Gibeah in the land of Benjamin, Benaiah from Pirathon, Hurai from near Nahel Geash, Abi Alban from Ereba, Asmaveth from Bahurim, Ilaba from Shealban, the sons of Jashin from Gizan, Jonathan son of Shagi from Herar, Ahiam son of Sheer from Herar, Eliphal son of Ur, Hefer from Mikira, Ahijah from Pelon, Hezro from Carmel, Peirai son of Hezbi, Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar son of Hagrai, Zelik from Ammon, Neherai from Beeroth, Joab's armor bearer, Ira from Jater, Gerub from Jater, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad son of Ali, Adina son of Shiza the Reubenite leader who had thirty men with him, Hanan, son of Meeka, Joshaphat from Mithna, Uziah from Ashtaroth, Shammah and Jeiel, the sons of Hatham from Aror, Jadiel, son of Shimri, Joah, his brother from Tiz, Iliel from Mehava, Jerobiah and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnaim, Ithma from Moab, Iliel and Obed, 
Jaziel from Zoba.